you can always call me the motivator because I keep you inspired, I keep you motivated. I do this because you love what I do and you have supported me and you've always been there giving me that push. We have surpassed 1,000 subscribers and we are headed to 2,000 subscribers. So invite your friends, share my story with your friends and families. Let's make a group, let's make a community, let's make a squad and let's teach the children of today and the generation that is coming after this generation of how life was and what they should expect from people and what they should expect from themselves. What they give is what they will get. And you know, this world is all about what you make out of it. If you give it a smile, it will give you back a smile. If you give a sadness, you give it a sorrow, you give it cries, it will always definitely give you back the cries and the sorrows. So I always say, keep smiling real. The reason behind keeping smiling real, it has won me so many things. And that's why I always I keep on smiling every single minute. Sometimes you can throw your abuses, but I smile at it because I am keeping smiling real. So let's get to today's topic. I, know, I want to take you back because I started this story uh, talking about leadership skills that I learned from my brother. But it is very important to understand um, the setup of primary school during those days and the setup of what we went through between home and school. Those who are there know uh, how this used to happen. You know, uh, it is a very interesting story that made us the people we are today. It is where we grew up as boys, but we became men out of that kind of um, experience. It took a very committed African child to go through the life experience that we went through to become the people that we are today. So when I was in my teens, and I just want to talk about uh, the last uh, years of my primary school. So we used to school in um, a village school which was a distance of um, around four kilometers because we, we used to tell us it's three kilometers but literally it's a four kilometer walk. So you have to wake up in the morning around five o'clock, you take a shower. Some of the times you don't take a shower, the water is so cold because it's not a shower, sorry, you take a bath because you've got to take um, a basin, then you've got to pour water into the basin, take it outside, sometimes you don't even have a bathroom, there's, 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 no, there's no bathroom. So you've got to wake up when it's still dark to shower outside your, your, your house, just in the front of the door. Um, sometimes you're lucky you had a bathroom, so you've got to stretch yourself, chew at the bathroom, take a bath, and the weather is very cold, and it's chilly in the morning, five o'clock, and you know, uh, it was a struggle. So after that, you've got to take your uh, petroleum jelly and you apply it in your, your body. If you're lucky to have a breakfast, then you're so rich. You've got to, to touch your journey. Sometimes friends would come from other sides, your cousins, your brothers, to join us in the walk. So we'll have to walk four kilometers to school in the morning. So you have to beat the time because you have the morning preps that starts from 6.30 in the morning and you've got to beat that time to be at school by 6.30. That is class 7 and class 8. So you've got to walk, it's a, it's, it's a racing walk, it's not just a, uh, you know, a luxury walk, it's a racing walk, you race to school and you're there seated at 6.30, the teacher comes, sometimes they don't come, you do the morning preps, after the morning preps, 7 o'clock, you know, you get out, sweeping the school, uh, picking up liters and all that. So from that you get to assembly and then the school uh, routine starts. Lesson starts at around 8 or 8.30 and goes until 12.45 when again you have to go back for lunch. So this is where the problem was. At 12.45 the sun is um, at its best, you know, it's shining and it's so hot and you have to race back home to have your lunch and you've got to be back to school by 1.55. So 12.45 to 1.55, that's basically one hour uh, in between. So you've got to race the four kilometers again. You have to run. So we used to run barefoot. We don't have shoes. You know, that time, it wasn't even about affording shoes. You know, the, the uniform or the formula was to walk barefoot. Sometimes when you had shoes, you felt shy because everybody didn't have shoes. So it's only you who has <laughs> what's going to be shoes. So you feel shy, you know. You just leave the shoes on. 
and you walk barefoot and it's sand, you get home. Some families sometimes when you're walking, you know, uh, our homes are built in such a way that you can see um, the building, the kitchen, mostly the kitchen, because you are focusing on the kitchen when you're going home for lunch. So you could see your kitchen from a distance. If you saw no smoke coming from the chimney, if you are lucky to have one, because most of the kitchens uh, were grass touched. So if you didn't see smoke coming through the grass, you know, the grass roof, then you knew there was a problem. There's nothing there. So sometimes you open the kitchen door and you go straight to, to where you cook. In our kitchens, we had this three stone, um, three stone stove where we use firewood. They are just three stones to hold up the pot. So you've got to put dry firewood and light the fire and then cook. So sometimes when you open the kitchen door and you look at the cooking place, the cat is sleeping on the ash, the wood ash. You know, things are bad here. Nothing is in this home. Do you know what happens at that time? It's either you go to the bushes or maybe your farm and pick some mangoes and guavas and maybe pluck some potatoes to have your lunch and to have water and get back on your wheels. The two means that you are given naturally by God, that's what will drive you back to school. You know you have to beat time, be at school by 1.55. Sometimes if you are lucky to have gotten lunch, sometimes you are lucky to have gotten food. The food is not prepared, so you have to lit fire. You've got to f get some fire from the fence. You pick some firewood, you lit the fire, and then you cook your food. And you eat it while hot. Take sips of water and get back on your wheels. The wheels that you are naturally given by God. And go back to school. You are running towards school again. You just ate. So that's an African child, a real African child. Sometimes, you know, I look at pictures being shared on social media by rich people, the billionaires, the millionaire clubs, those who live a luxurious life. And then they share some photos on social media uh, that were captioned through this timing. An African child with, uh, with shorts or maybe clothing that are not that much luxurious or maybe having some patches you know, and maybe they're playing or they're running to at school and then somebody uh, writes uh, something under that photo and says that happiness is all about loving yourself. Or somebody says happiness is not about having too much money. Come on, guys. The reality of the matter is that is not a show of happiness. There are so many things that these kids lack. There are so many sacrifices that are made for you to see that smile in their faces. They don't smile because they love what they are. We never smile because we loved it. We smile because we just we, we, we accepted the fact that that was us. But we lacked a lot of things. We wanted so many things. We admired people who never went through what we went through. We admire those who are being dropped by cars to school. We admire those who could ride a bicycle to school. We admire them. We really wanted to be that. So let no one cheat you with a photo on social media that you will like and share and they get money in return showing you a poor kid. Sorry to use the word poor because it's about humble background. It's all about poverty. But I will use poor so that you understand this. Let no one share a poor kid's photo on social media and get a million likes and a thousand shares and get to earn out of it, then tell you that that's the life you need to live. This is a guy trying to make you to play with your mindset, to believe that in your state you are okay to, to go. You are not. You need to get outside there and make an end out of it. You need to get outside there. You need to get out of that comfort zone. You don't need to see that picture and feel that that's what happiness is all about. Happiness is all about poverty. There's no one who is happy because they are poor. It has never happened. So that was, that was the kind of a life that we had in school. So what happens at school? 
sometimes you know the teachers were just so weird so sometimes i sit back and i smile and i wonder what used to happen with our teachers during those times because you can imagine that experience uh, you've gone through running from school to home prepare your own lunch eat it run back to school it's 155 on the dot the bell rings you're still you're almost at the gate the gate is closed and the teacher is there with a with a long cane you know I used to grow cypress uh, along the school fence so the small branches will be plucked and will be used as trucking uh, cane so the teacher will be standing at the gate and you'll be getting your whip one or two and then you run to class at the class exactly two o'clock the teacher is coming in and maybe you know they will be like Ah, good afternoon class, good afternoon. You know, that time maybe you had nothing. Your stomach is telling you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's there with um, your papers, or maybe your, 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 your answer sheets that have been marked. There was an exam, and the teacher comes, and there was a pass mark that was raised to you. Everybody has to score 60% or 50%. But something that is funny about this pass mark, nobody ever succeeded in not getting punished because you passed or you you reached pass mark or you went above the pass mark this is how it used to happen the teacher will come into the class at two o'clock it's very hot you're still feeling the heat in your stomach because you ate hot food or you never ate anything you just drank water and you came back to school the teacher says that the pass mark was 50 and therefore john you got 45 Neil there, uh, Beatrice, you got 55. But Beatrice, you know, our pass mark was 50, but a student or a pupil like you should not get 55. I don't know why you got 55. That's how it used to happen. So, you know, he says you got 55 and you're happy, oh, I'm over the pass mark. But then something will come in like, but Beatrice, you know, you don't deserve to get 55. You are people who are supposed to be scoring 70 and above. Come, Neil down there. Oh. You got a pass mark, but something else comes in. And then the, he will go ahead. Uh, uh, Peter, Peter you scored 84%. You guys, you are somebody who is supposed to be scoring 90% there. You know, you will never be lucky in an African class during our time. And if you are lucky, then maybe you scored, let's say, 98 or 96%. And you're told, yeah, you did well. And you sat down. There was a time also that was coming for you. The teacher will start revising the sums one by one from number one up to 50. And sometimes you got 96%. And the sum that you missed, the two sums that you missed, were the easiest. That's where your time would come. That's where you would receive your strokes of cane. So those, that, that, that was our life. You know, it was about hardship, it was about stress, it was about um, some pain, going through pain. In fact, I remember Ramundi Primary School, the school motto was pain, then gain. You know, it was all about pain. It was about inflicting pain on a kid or on a child. And that has never been an issue for me today. In fact, I would wish that my child would pass through the same. Because it disciplined us. It created that kind of a mind that we need to be uh, proactive. We need to see solutions where there are problems. You see, the math teacher will come at 2 o'clock and do his magic on us and leave. The English teacher will come with the same routine and do his magic on us and leave. Social studies or maybe CRE teacher will come and do and leash the magic on us and leave. And we were happy. Games time, we, we get outside and we are playing, we are playing balls, we have already forgotten all the canes. But you can still feel the pain. When you see a paper in front of you before you start doing that exams, you've got to think. You've got to read a psalm and read again and read three times. And be sure of what you are answering. Be sure of what you are calculating. It is not a rush. We are not rushing to get answers. We are rushing to be right, to understand what we are doing. Because we knew if you did not understand, 
there was something else that was coming after you failed. So we are taught to be people who can think. We are taught to be people who can be assistant and can be resilient to whatever bad happens into our lives. So that is a brief explanation of what happens in the schools. And I want you to get that point before I get to my next episode where I'll be trying to drive you to understand how my brother's leadership skills uh, developed me until becoming who I am. So in the next episode, I'll be taking you through what happened between me and my brother in a classroom of 45 pupils, and I had not done an assignment that he left the other day. Until that, my name is John Gora, aka The Motivator. If this is the first time that you're watching my videos and you loved what you hear here and you would want to be part of our community, subscribe to this channel and don't forget to push the notification button because it will remind you when we publish our next video.